All right, welcome to the Coach Brennan Weekly Press Conference. The Spartans head to New Mexico State on Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific time on Flow Football. Coach will have a quick statement, then feel free to ask questions. Coach? Okay, good to see everybody. Um, all right, so coming off a tough weekend for us uh, down in Fresno, just with everything that comes with that game. Uh, I give Coach Tedford credit and his staff and their team. They played really well. And uh, we, we just did not make enough plays at the end of the game to finish it. Um, so there's a lot of frustrating moments. I thought we played fantastic defense. thought we had a little bit of trouble finding our rhythm offensively. Um, and then I thought there were some things in the kicking game that were really good and some things we need to clean up. So it was uh, definitely um, not our best day on the on the field, but uh, you know, I'm optimistic that there are better days ahead. Uh, but like I said, they did a really nice job. Great crowd, like what a great atmosphere for a college football game. Like that was a lot of fun. Um, they did a really good job with that. Um, so um, congratulations to Coach Tedford and those guys. And uh, you know, we've now turned our efforts to New Mexico State. And it's a tough game because of the, the travel and not knowing much about them. I know we played them a year ago, but they got a new coaching staff. You know, their head coach has been a successful, very successful coach on every level he's ever coached on. Um, and they've got good players at, at all spots in the field. If you look at their defense, um, you know, I really think both linebackers are really good players. They're really solid up front. And the secondary is physical and, uh, you know, do a really good job in coverage and kind of um, their, their run fit. So that's a, that's a challenge for us. The, um, the, the offense, you know, the quarterback that's been playing as of late, Looks like a really athletic, good player with a big old arm. Uh, just makes some incredible throws on tape. And they've got a couple wide receivers that can go deep and make plays. Then their backs are big physical guys and that are downhill and run hard. So uh, it's going to be a big time challenge for us going on the road um, you know, for the second week in a row and, and going to a place that no one in our program's ever been before or none of our players have. And so uh, we got a lot of work to do. We had a great practice today, and, and I'm excited to, to get moving forward. Questions for Coach? I guess you kind of answered my first question on, on New Mexico. But I mean, you're heavily favored. They're 2-5, and five, and it seems like a similar vibe. They have a great crowd the uh, last couple of games I watched there. And yeah. I think you answered most of the questions. But now that we're almost midway to the season, um, and teams are kind of seeing more tape and figuring you out, and yep. what Fresno did to really kind of stop Shevin from running. Right. Is it more difficult to like add or enhance plays or schemes at this point in the season or is it still more about execution? Well, it, it's always about execution and I really feel like it's always about us. It's about how we handle those moments, you know, how we execute what we've called. Um, you know, a, a lot of moments in that game is kind of just one one guy slipping off and it was just a lot of really close uh, opportunities for big plays that were just disappointing that we didn't make them. Um, but, but it is that, right? You get it halfway through the season. Um, everybody's, you know, it, a little bit banged up. So you go through some of that and you're trying to figure out and mix and match and get the right people in the right places to give you a chance to play good football. Um, so I think everyone's going through that on, on some level. Um, you know, you're just hope, hoping that, uh, you know, through the practice and through focusing on kind of your day to day and the, the process, you know, that it gives you a chance throughout the course of the week to kind of regain that confidence and get excited about playing and, and then be ready to put good football out there Saturday evening or afternoon. Now, throughout Fresno, a lot of deep throws to Cooks and not as much running, uh, definitely in the second half. Is that something that happened just because the way the game was going or is that something you had planned going into the game? I'd say a little bit of both. You know, I think one of the hard things that happened in that game, right, is we had a couple runs called back on holds and so you know, that kind of changes some of your thought process there. Um, and then, you know, we, when Jaime got nicked in the second quarter, that kind of, you know, then we're trying to find the best way that those pieces can work together up front. Um, so, um, but, you know, I think, you know, we're always going to want to be a team that can throw the ball down the field. You know, that, and I think, you know, with our quarterback and our receivers and our tight ends, like those guys give us a chance to do those kind of things or, get, you know, hopefully give us a chance to do that. You touched on process in the last question there, and uh, uh, third in the nation, I think, a turnover margin, and obviously that was always something you mentioned. And where do you think the processes are, like 
really helping that you started in the beginning of the season and you know where are they kind of maybe still short you would say well I you know I think there's uh you know all that stuff you can practice that doesn't mean it always shows up on game day you know sometimes those those things can be kind of streaky um you know I, I do think our defense has been good at attacking the football and and you know creating those situations and I think it speaks to just how much those guys care and how much they work and how much detail they put into their process throughout the course of the day. That, that's such a big thing for us. I know I, know I go back to it a lot. Um, I just think it's um, really important for, for our team and for our program that we focus on those small things day in and day out, right? Like this meeting or this rep in practice, you know, this drill or what, you know, and this film session, whatever it is, um, I really think Often times young people, I think because of the bombardment they get from like the social media and outside noise, like they're always like thinking way down the road and that doesn't help you. It doesn't help you get ready for the, the problem that's, or the challenge that's right in front of you. And so that's what we're talking about a lot with them. And, and I think um, they've done a great job with you know our takeaways and, and Shevin's done a great job protecting the football. And so I think, and, and so of our backs and everyone's carried the ball for us. So that's something that we continue to emphasize and continue to put a, a huge amount of stress on, you know, in our practice environment, in our meetings, and all those kind of things. So I was talking to Chip yesterday, and one of the guys he brought up was defensive line coach Joe Ciamalo. Um, obviously, you're there every single day seeing what he does. What does he actually do for somebody who's not behind the scenes as much as you are? Wait, uh, re yeah, yeah, I know who Joe Ciamalo well, is. Well, but, well, but. <laughs> No, no, but you're saying how does it, how does that compare to me? Oh no, just what are you seeing? What is your perspective from what he's doing? Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so Coach Sam Malo is one of the best D-line coaches in America. He has been for 20 years. It's every school he's ever been at. He has led the conference in sacks, or led the nation in sacks, or you know, like he has always been that. Um, he just has a great way with his players. Um, you know, I think we have a really healthy brotherhood on our team, and I think it's even levels up in that room of defensive linemen. And then when you have leaders like Cade Hall and Lando Gray and Junior Fehoko, like those guys keep that thing so tight and they hold that room to such a high standard that it's, it's really impressive to watch. But this is my fifth stop with Joe Ciamalo, right? So we crossed over in Hawaii for a minute. We were at Cal Poly together. We were here together and we were Oregon State together. And now we're back here together. So I'm a big believer in Joe. If I could maybe just touch on a mental health kind of question for you and the coaches, like seeing you year in, year out, tough losses, and especially in Fresno, I mean, you could feel or sense like that emotional weight you take on. And like, besides Courtney, I mean, who's, how do yeah. you guys support you in that sense? You know? <laughs> I, honestly, I, I think uh, the coaching uh, life is, is hard, hardest on our spouses and our families. Um, we get to, day in and day out, we get to like pour everything we've got into our team, into our players, into our coaches. We have this like camaraderie where we're, you know, we're going to battle every day and we're trying to come up with new ideas and exciting ways to teach this or coach this or attack this scheme or game plan this in or recruiting, right? There's just like, so you're so kind of engulfed in it as a coach, but you know, the outcomes are so challenging for your families and um, that that's really a hard part of it, you know, and and so I, I definitely try to be sensitive to that. And uh, they've also been in it now for 20 something years, uh, you know, but there's been times in my career where it's been incredibly hard on my children, um, like when they were young and not old enough to stand up for themselves or didn't really understand. Like, you know, they, they, there's been some really tough times that way, um, which is unfortunate, right, because um, I think lots of people love college football and you like that people are passionate about it. Um, but if, you know, if they're upset about something we did or did not do, they should just come talk to me, not to my wife or my kids. <laughs> so kind of related to mental health, obviously not to what you're just directly talking about, but is that why, so the way Fresno went, um, the way the three game win streak was before, is that why you kind of emphasizing don't get too high up because there all are some of those times where it lets you down just trying to stay even keel, even when things are going swimmingly? Yeah, I think that's a challenge for any, any team in any situation, right? Um, you know, my old head coach at UCLA, Terry Donahue, used to always say, 
when things are good, they're not that good. And when things are bad, they're not that bad. Just keep moving forward. And, um, you know, but that's hard to do with, uh, in, and I mentioned kind of the social media thing. To me, it's harder than ever because if we have a great game, then, you know, it's not just your family or your friends like, hey, way to go. You know, it's like 5,000 fans on social media like, yeah, you know, and so they feel all that love and that just, you know, kind of, uh, you know, just all that good stuff. And then, right, then you go and you lose to Fresno, right? And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, and everyone's like, oh, you suck and it's miserable and da, 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 right? And, and, you know, both things can be true and both things cannot be true, right? Like we were playing good football. We didn't play good. We played a good team on Saturday. We didn't play our best game and they beat us, right? And so it's all about how we respond to those tough moments, which I think gives you a chance to be the kind of team you want to be or not. So you have brought up social media a couple times throughout this press conference. Are there conversations this week or have there been conversations at all about saying don't read too much into what people are saying about you? Because, I mean, that's something that's a part of your life, part of the player's life. Like, how do you actually balance out saying don't go on Twitter or do go on Twitter? Like, how does that work? So we talk about it a lot in this program, and we talk about a couple of things. Number one, we talk about not giving your power away to someone that you don't know or respect. And which is really hard for young people to do, right? Um, I mean, you see professional athletes get in, like, you know, trash talking situations with like fans. You're like, what are you doing? Like, it's just, you know. So try and get our guys. Um, but the thing we say all the time is just, hey, tell them stop. I'm climbing a mountain. I don't have time to get into that because the mountain is too hard and there's too much work we got to do to get where we want to go. So that's kind of our, that's our tagline here. Just like, and we and we do it with family, friends. You know, all of it. Just, just stop. I'm climbing a mountain. I don't have time for that. Like, the work I have to do is too hard and too important. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you all. See you soon.